Yo, congratulations, Cal L. Superman himself. You won the giveaway from last week's video. Enjoy your hot comics list. What's good, comic fam? Thanks for joining us at the table like we do every single week. Hit the subscribe button. We're here to go over the hottest comics in the comic book industry right here, right now. The record breakers are the ones that are moving and shaking and surprising dealers across the country. And I'm at the table virtually with Jem from Gem Mint Collectibles. How are you feeling? I'm feeling great. What's going on, Tom? What's going on to the comic fam? The comic Tominites. Comic fam, hit that like button. You know we got a giveaway on deck. And let's chat about some themes that we have begun to see play out throughout 2020. At number 10, we have Yusagi Ojimbo's first appearance in Albedo, issue number two. Yeah, we've talked about this book on a couple of episodes. It's one of those 80s, 90s nostalgia books. It's one of those untapped independent books that really has a lot of room to grow with a super low print run. It all started earlier in the year with TMNT, surprising everybody because collectors in waves started to really go after comic books that had some type of influence on their childhood, those 80 and 90s independent books. And cartoon books, we saw Transformers start to spike, G.I. Joe, even Thundercats. So it's no surprise that one of the most respected independent books is starting to creep up on the list again and that we're seeing record breakers this year over and over again. I'll remind the community about the staggering 9.8 record of this comic book earlier this last quarter, selling for $28,800. 9.8 setting this giant benchmark because there's only 10 that exist on the CGC census to date. With those types of gains, we knew anything above a 9.0 would be heavily sought after, which is why we're reporting on a 9.0 record breaker this week. What once went for $4,050 has now hit an all-new high of $5,500. Woo, that's a big jump. Let's leap over to number nine, Jem, because we have one of the most underrated keys in comics to chat about. Man, it's so crazy to see the book on this list because I just read this issue the other day. I was reading The Absolute Swamp Thing, Volume 2 by Alan Moore, and I just put up a review of that book on my channel. Dude, it's one of the best stories in comic books, is it not? You know what? I think it might be the greatest comic book series that I've ever read. Swamp Thing by Alan Moore. It's a must read. Comic fam, that's why I got to slap that like button. We got good taste on the show. You know that John Constantine is one of my all-time favorites. And with his first appearance in this issue, we've been expecting to see it climb and climb again because we know that he's going to be appearing in JLA Dark, which is being brought to HBO Max courtesy of J.J. Abrams, but not just that. We know Neil Gaiman's Sandman series is on its way to Netflix. Casting is going to be announced shortly, and we know we're going to see John Constantine hit that series. Last month, we had a direct edition 9.8 sell for $1,302, but this week we had a huge sale, a 9.8 newsstand that sold for $2,095. What impressive spikes to this comic book, underrated for quite a long time. Hit them with number eight on the list because I was expecting price hikes, but I'm not sure about this one. Yeah, number eight is Savage She-Hulk number one, the first appearance of Bruce Banner's cousin, She-Hulk. There's a lot of hype surrounding the character. There is a Disney Plus show in the works. There are a lot of big sales happening, but some of them are looking a little too big. Tatiana Maslany was announced a couple months ago to be taking on the role of She-Hulk. So that pushed a lot of buyers towards the spec of She-Hulk. A lot of 9.8s started going for between $550 and $600. We saw a record breaker for a newsstand copy hit $800 last month. And today, we are reporting after Emmy-winning writer Jessica Gale from Rick and Morty. She wrote the Pickle Rick episode, was attached to this show. We saw another $729 sale for a newsstand, nearly matching last month's record breaker but here's the thing five days later we see a near twelve hundred dollar sale for that same book in the same grade suspicious yeah that's why when you see us cover these big record breaking sales we like to follow up with there have been multiple sales in that price range we know that there could be a loan sale that could be a shill sale it could be somebody who just had too much money and didn't do enough research so that's kind of like where we're at with this she hulk book that's spot on, Jem. I mean, we see every week a lot of movements in prices. Sometimes it's 50 sometimes it's $100. The big moves happen when you see something on screen, when it actually gets announced, when the trailers happen. And it typically moves near same day. 
But seeing a sale that's days later for nearly $500 more without anything major happening in media, it just doesn't line up. This is the move that someone would make if they were trying to adjust the prices of a book artificially. Or as you mentioned, maybe someone pulled the trigger too soon. We don't know. But I do like the quote that's on Key Collector's Hot 10 this week. So this is the quote from Analyst X, and I appreciate the transparency. Every week, there are a few loan sales that show big jumps for no apparent reason. And of course, I get messages from burner accounts making sure I see the sales. Time is spent, calls are made, all to verify the legitimacy of said sales. If the sale is suspect, I won't include it, even if others do. You never heard about the massive Spawn 1 newsstand sale from last month here, did you? You know? The one that no other copy has come close to selling for before or since? Yeah, I like the fact they didn't include that book on the list because it didn't pass the sniff test. It makes you feel comfortable that Key Collector just doesn't throw any large sale out there on the app just for the headline. Personally, I like to think I graduated from the school of the CGC forums, the most <laughs> thorough detectives in comic book sales. They teach you how to look at eBay shill bidding and if that buyer has a large relationship with the seller you know, based on bid percentage and things of that nature. So I like to see that Key Collector has those practices as well and it makes me feel comfortable when reporting these sales. Use that code TOM101. It'll unlock a free one-week subscription of the best comic book app in existence, but it'll also give you access to the Hot 10 list, which is where we source the information for this very show from. All right, at the list at number seven, ASM 129, we have the first appearance of Punisher in full and the Jackal. Is it because of the Jackal? I don't know. It could be, Jim. What do you think? Yeah, this is the first appearance of the Jackal and some guy named Frey Castle. This classic cover by John Romita Sr. features a giant moment in the Bronze Age. This character being introduced, not just in comic books, but then would later be introduced to Hollywood with multiple attempts. And then over on Netflix, and we know that the Netflix deal is ending. We're going to be getting our defenders back to the MCU come as soon as January. So this is a great time to spec on these particular characters as they are likely going to be gone off of Netflix and moving on to bigger things. All right, so let's see what the Punisher is doing as far as sales. We have a CGC 4.0 that broke its previous record of $840 selling at 900 even. We've got some movement in the 6.0 and 6.5 range. We have a white page 6.0 that is up from its previous record of $1,081 selling at $1,100. But a huge jump in the 6.5 range. We have a book that once sold for $1,215 now selling for $1,700. A 7.5 is up slightly from its previous record of $1,620 selling at $1,650. Then we have a CGC 9.6, which sold for $5,350, which is the second highest amount this book has ever sold for in that grade. Now, I find it curious here, Jem. We saw two different records here that you just quoted, one at 6.5 hitting $1,700 and a 7.5 hitting $1,650. Someone either paid too much or another person possibly got a really good deal. Yeah, I guess we should keep an eye on the 7.5s because obviously they should rise with the 6.5 grade. We should be keeping an eye on those, just like we should be keeping an eye out on some of our alien and predator friends from the Dark Horse franchises that are now officially acquired by Marvel Comics. Number six on the list, let's welcome Aliens number one to the list. The first appearance of aliens in original stories and comic books, the Xenomorphs. One of my favorite franchises in comics and sci-fi slash horror. And this comic, I was surprised to see make the list. I was excited, but I was a little intrigued. I mean, this is a, a, a more common, newer book compared to some of the others on this list. But then I saw the record breakers and I was stunned. Yeah, this news hit big for me in two ways. Not only are we getting a ton of variant covers which have the Xenomorphs pairing up with Marvel characters, but they're also announcing Omnibus for the Dark Horse material published by Marvel. So I'm super excited to get my hands on some Aliens Omnibus. Marvel's been teasing a ton of covers featuring the Xenomorph, and we know that Predator's next. And as soon as they debut individually each franchise, you know we're going to get some type of wicked crossover. It's going to get crazy, but let's chat about the numbers. August of this year, we saw for the first time in comic book history 
This issue at 9.8 break the $1,000 barrier. We were stunned. But a lot of people were hyped about the Marvel acquisition, so it made sense. But then in October, we saw a 9.8 pop up and go for $1,425. That is staggering gains in a short 30 days. Now this week, we saw another 9.8 sale hit $1,675. And then really soon after, another for $1,750. This comic book has grown in price over $750 in two months. You guys also got to be on the lookout for that second printing. You can't tell by the front cover that it's a second print. You got to look on the inside cover at the Indica where the copyright information is. It'll read second printing. That's right. It goes for a little bit less. You got to be hunting for the first print unless people will start really wanting the second print. But, you know. <laughs> right. <laughs> All right. Let's chat about number five on the list because every Friday we are getting closer and closer, Jem. And spoiler warning. I don't, Jim, I don't understand the peeps who watch our show and go, I can't believe you're talking spoilers when we're talking about the freaking hikes in the comic book market. How can we not talk about things going on in the market? I digress. We know Ahsoka Tano's coming. Rosario Dawson's playing her. And we're going to see her, if not next Friday, likely the Friday after that, countdown officially Star Wars Clone Wars number one at number five. Yeah, I just got done watching episode three last night, and they said her name in the episode. I'm texting Tom, like, she's going to show up soon. Ashoka Tana, she's coming soon, and the community knows it. We saw three different records broken this week. Nine fours, nine six, and nine eights. Let's get to it. The nine eight has doubled in value since May, and this past week has sold twice for all-time records, up from $1,699, new 9.8, selling for $1,725. Now we move on to the 9.6, which was selling at $1,000, now going for $1,159, even the 9.4 is seeing gains, which once went for $659, now selling for $675. We all saw a raw high-grade copy go for $1,133 this week. Now that that book has passed the $1,000 marker, I don't think it's going back. And you guys got to keep an eye out for the variant cover by Dave Filoni. We haven't seen any sales of that book this week. It's made the list multiple times. It's a banger because there are only 1,000 copies of this book and only 10 stores received 10 copies each. So it's a very scarce book and we're probably going to see those things hit the market once Ashoka Tano is on screen. All right, number four on the list, we have Hero Trade number one, down one spot from number three last week. It seems to kind of be leveling off a little bit. That's right. Last week, we saw the record breaker at a CGC 9.8 selling for $2,900. We are seeing average prices leveling out at $2,750. Just giant numbers for this comic book. It was low print, $250 made, and a lot of damages, and some were even thrown out is what the rumor is. And we are also seeing average sales at $900 for raw copies. People aggressively securing their copies as Bad Idea continues to tease their titles. This past week, Baltimore Comic Con X saw a secret Bad Idea panel virtually. And the CEO, Dinesh Shandasani, had some fun things to talk about. He actually dropped a bunch of information about comics that are coming out next year. And... Some harsh criticism that was pretty funny. Take a look. Anyway, I've been asked to tell you all about ENIAC number one, why it's Bad Ideas launch book, except for the hero trade and codename Megalith, but we don't have to talk about those. But you may not know that the reason it's our launch book is because we feel it embodies everything that Bad Ideas stands for. And by that, I mean, it is a comic book. It's true. Not many people know that. It's got pictures on the inside, and they're fully colored. Anyway, they asked me to tell you what I think of Tankers. It's terrible. Take it from me, I read it. Does make a lick of sense? It's not going to be easy to say, but it needs to be said at this point. I didn't want to publish it. I never wanted to do it. I still don't. And that's what we love. All about the low bar, bad idea. So if uh, you have children or you're an adult that shits himself, pick up Walesville. It's cool to see comic book influencers and industry people participate in what was an evaporating comic convention scene, but is still being done virtually online, bringing the community together. I appreciate that. Yeah, man. Moving on to number three on the list. It's the second Star Wars book here, Star Wars 42, the first appearance of Boba Fett. 
So what's interesting, Jam, is that these stories were actually reprinted in the UK published comic book adaptation of the movies so on the cgc label of star wars 42 you don't see to my knowledge i don't recall bubba fett's first appearance being on there yeah it looks like it's still uncredited but um the market has decided it's the first comic book appearance now what do you think about this given that these are technically a reprinting from something that was printed originally in a magazine you see a lot of collectors actually hunting for both or one or the other yeah, I mean, it's kind of like the Guardians of the Galaxy keys, man. Like, you have the first uh, Rocket Raccoon, first Star-Lord, which have their magazine first appearances and their comic book first appearances. Something about us comic collectors tend to move more towards the comic appearance, in my opinion. Yeah, I'm not a stickler. I mean, I do like magazines, and I do buy some with the intent of, like, considering them a key appearance because they are in published form. But there is something about the version that fits in a long box that I do enjoy. All right, so let's take a look at what happened this week. We're seeing new highs for the CGC 9.6 newsstand edition at $570, then again for $595, and finally the $650 sale, which is up $110 from the previous record. We have a new high for the CGC 9.4 Direct Edition. It once sold for $350. We have a new sale at $400 even. Then looking at some lower grades, the 9.2 newsstand is up from its $289 sale, selling at $315, and a 9.0 newsstand up $50 from its $250 record, selling for $300. We've been waiting to see a 9.8 newsstand hit the market, and I think when it does, it's going to blow the socks off all of these lower grade copies. We are seeing Little gains, you know, 20, 30, 40, in $50 in difference because it's a slow rise. But when that large sale happens, expect to see those small gains multiply themselves. I want to hear what you, the comic fam, a.k.a. the comic Tomanites, think about the magazine first appearance versus the comic book version. All right, we got a giveaway here. We're going to send one person both versions of my TMNT 109 John Boy Myers variant. We have my color version and the sketch version. And you know it be Raphael because we got Raphael number one coming in at the list at number two. The first TMNT miniseries, the first appearance of fan favorite Casey Jones. This book and all Turtles keys have been rising like crazy. So we just got done riffing over magazines, chatting about the difference in size and the standard comic books. This is like in between both of those. This is an oversized comic printed on pretty terrible paper that's notoriously difficult to get in high grade. And we saw a raw copy this week get listed for $2,000 and get sold for $2,000. But that's not all, because really what we have to focus on is those higher grade graded copies and key collectors keeping you updated with the private market. A 9.6 traded hands for $2,650 this week, which is right in line with the previous highs that have been reported on in the last couple weeks. This only further validates the comic book community's interest in investing and securing their TMNT collectibles in 2020. But the real surprise this week, the groundbreaker was the 9.8 record selling for $5,900 this week. Jem, what were we reporting on in September? Man, back in September, if you were watching this channel and you were watching this weekly video like you should be, make sure to hit that subscribe you would have known that it sold for $2,200. If you would have bought a copy back then, you could have potentially flipped for more than double right now. Gains of $3,700 in 60 days. What's going on? What does the comic fam know that we don't? Besides that TMNT is freaking awesome. Let's chat about number one on the list because we called it last week, Jam. Key Collector called it. Analysis X called it. We got TMNT Adventures issue number one making the list. And I'm seeing in multiple collector forums talking about this book, wanting to know why it's going so high. I don't know. Maybe someone could tell me. I think this has to do with earlier collectibles in the run starting to outprice themselves so severely that officially now it's open season people are looking for the next keys to get 
if you can't get the second print, you can't get the third print, hell, you can't get the fourth print, you're moving on to the second issue. Now the third issue. Now the fourth issue. Heck, TMNT number five was on the trending 20 this past week. It's very telling. Yeah, and when those old TMNT Mirage books get out of your price range, you're going to look to the next volume, the Archie series, the TMNT Adventures number one. And hey, who doesn't love Bebop and Rocksteady and Krang? This is where the Turtles get their signature bandanas. Really, this right here, to some people, could be looked at as like the real first appearance of the Turtles they actually grew up with. Does that make sense? Yeah, totally. Like the first appearance in comics of the cartoon version of the Turtles. I mean, most people grew up watching the animated series or seeing the movies. They didn't grow up reading Kevin Eastman and Peter Lard's version with guns blazing. So it gives more reason to this book, especially because when this landed, it was so popular and it had such a big opportunity for distribution that they made four different versions. You got to keep out for the direct market. You have to keep an eye out for the newsstand, but you have to remember they also took it to Canadian markets where it was sold on the Canadian direct and newsstand market. That's four different versions. Let's start with the regular edition hitting an all new record this week. This was a $600 record breaker a week ago has now jumped to near $1,000 CGC 9.8 hitting 950 bucks. But then we also look at a 9.6 regular edition that was going for a new record of $380 broken twice this week, going for $530 and then $800. Yeah, but those sales have nothing on the newsstand sales. Man, last week, a CGC 9.8 newsstand sold for $1,200. But this week, another newsstand came to the market and sold for an astonishing $2,600. Again, more than double the prior record. Then we got to look at the 9.6 newsstands. That's almost doubled as well. It went from $450 to $800. That Canadian price variant that you mentioned, the CGC 9.6 is up from $342, selling at $400. And even an ungraded copy of that Canadian newsstand ended on eBay for $485 for a raw copy. Holy smokes, for a raw copy, and considering how grade-sensitive this book was, they weren't selling these books intending them to go to collectors. I mean, they were literally made by the Archie line. They were made to be read, and read by children. And that was a crazy list, Tom. Everyone watching, make sure you like this video. Make sure you're subscribed to the channel, because we drop this every week. And as always, you guys geek responsibly, and stay minty fresh. Enough said. Comic fam, thanks so much for watching the video. It's always so much fun to sit down at the table with you and talk comic books. we got other videos that you can check out where we do a lot more of the same. We chat about expensive paper. Come join us.